We're live? Ooh, we're live. Okay. Doesn't matter. We're live in my Kinda head. Kinda does. Yeah! What are the form agreements? Huh? I'll be impeccable with my word? Yeah. I will not make assumptions. I'll always be on time. Change my diapers. I forgot. What are the other, what are the four? We'll talk about it later. Do the ads first. Sweat Equity Podcast and Streaming Show. We're doing this live on a Saturday night because you can't really party right now in the COVID era. I'm your host, Lost Miss. Sitting next to me is Eric Redinger. If you like this show, hit us up on iTunes, Apple Podcast app. Give a five-star review. Rate and review. Subscribe, all that good stuff. Listen on uh, Spotify Laughable if you want. You can listen or watch on YouTube. Obviously, Facebook if you're watching live. We're going to try to take some live questions if I can. No, you won't. We'll you see. Won't. I'm, my ADD is pretty strong, so yeah. we'll see. Right, so you won't. This episode is brought to you by Grasshopper. Grasshopper phone lines, try grasshopper.com forward slash sweat gets you 75 bucks off a of business phone line. Don't have a Google voice for your business number. Don't have your personal cell phone for your your business, your side hustle, whatever you're trying to do, that brand you're working on after hours, whatever it is. Don't need, do it. You need Just a real don't business, do it. You need a real business phone line. Just grab it's, che- it's cheaper than getting it from your phone carrier, I found out. It's a scalable system, so if you need to add phone lines to the app, you can do that. I like to talk to people through my desktop, through the Grasshopper desktop app. Yeah, I'm not only going to promote it, I'm a user. Trygrasshopper.com forward slash sweat is the only way you can get $75 off an annual plan and hook this show up. That's our headline sponsor for this episode. I'm going to run through our feature ones. ExpressVPN, tryexpressvpn.com forward slash sweat gets you three months free off an annual plan. Tryrone.com forward slash sweat. Roan is the fanciest of fancy kind of workout gear tryrone.com forward slash sweat the fanciest mm-hmm. that's a big selling point you know hey do you like do you like the highest end yes are you a fan look you're Don't wearing, you're wearing fancy, an Indochino though. suit you're a fancy boy yeah well, tryrone.com forward slash sweat gets you 20% off using that link or using the promo code bridge20 freshbooks go freshbooks.com forward slash sweat get a 30 day free trial on us get the hot uh, get the hookup holler if you hear me wow. go freshbooks.com forward slash sweat and then Warby Parker, Warby Parker, eyewear, sunglasses, prescription. You do, do it in, you? Uh, WarbyParkerTrial.com forward slash sweat. Get five free pairs to try on at home or at your office if you're still working in an office. Or in your car if you're Let sad. everybody tell you how fat your head is and what looks good, what doesn't. Send them all back if you don't like them. But if you want to not get ripped off by big, the big eye. Big eye. Big eye. Lens crafters are all owned I, by I, one I, company. Warby Parker's that disruptor company you need, and they've got outlet stores, I think now in almost every major city in the United States that you can check out. I think we're good. I think we're ready to go. Yeah. We're live, baby. All right. What about my sweat Hi, equity? Daddy. Sweat equity. Sweat, 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 sweat equity. My sweat equity. My, my, my sweat equity. Ooh, man. Yeah. Play it on your phone, dude. Wow. I'm uh, sharing this as it's live so oh. our network of people can see it. Which people love to watch other people do is play on their phones. Well, look how you're framed up, too. God, you should be embarrassed of yourself. It's ridiculous. I know. I got hip problems. I'm moving around. Okay. You know, I'm making excuses, that kind of thing. No, what, I, what you want to do... It's either a leg thing or a spiritual thing or a psychological thing or a heart attack. With the excuses all the time. I'm gonna start a watch party. <laughs> uh, so, make so sure, that gets. Make sure they rewind for that. that was, okay. I don't know. I just know that more people watch the show, listen to the show. If there's, it's live. It's there's a uh, a watch party on Facebook. We do need, uh, you know, we do need to diddle, diddle, play around. What? With, <laughs> we do need to diddle with uh, restream.io so it can just. Uh, spit, what? <laughs> spit out to everything. So, Lou, like, Lou, Lou needs to take it easy. Um, no, but uh, we, I like how you always have these assignments for me. No, yeah, we need to just get on. That. We messed with it before. We did re- restream. We we three did years not. Ago. Yeah, we did. I did. 
You did? And gave up. Yeah. Okay. Because it's hard. It got better, I heard. The internet Like is a gay hard. kid in high school, it gets better. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're dressed up. Why are you so fancy today? Uh, I don't know. You want to take a guess? Um, I don't know. You're going to... I just got back from a bartending gig. Oh, yeah? No. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say that's. Or I was that gonna what it say, looks like kind of looks like that, huh? Give me a towel. I was gonna say you look like a magician's assistant, maybe. So you want to chop me in half? And maybe, maybe you had a lesbian uh, magician that you you know switch it up or switch the gender roles. What? Yeah. Why would it be? A- I don't, I feel like you need that kind of strength, that kind of forearm strength to. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of I don't, card it's play. Also, yeah. Yeah. All, I can't move my fingers fast enough. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel You're like. Never good uh, at that. They got that dad strength, a lot of magicians. Right. It's the just ultimate. that force. It's not, there's no, there's no nuance. A lot of dexterity, but also a lot of power behind I'm saying it. zero dexterity. Oh, really? All power. Oh, no, I'm saying both. Okay. I'm saying the best of both worlds. Brad Pitt, baby, you know? I mean, you can't just, you know, it's not Superman. You can't just take all the superpowers. You gotta have some weaknesses. Just saying. Yeah, Superman is the weakest of all superheroes. So stupid. Like, who cares? Uh, and, and what are your thoughts? Call in. Oh God! Okay, yeah. Um, Should I end this shit now? No, man. Uh, we are we're doing it live, and I think you're getting nervous about it. And there's nothing to be nervous about. Um, what's going on in your world? What are you working I'm, on? Anything? Um, Anything fun? Uh, I'm getting a divorce. Oh! oh divorce! Wow. Divorce! <laughs> divorce! Divorce! You have drops? Nothing. I thought you were wearing. That's why I thought you were wearing a suit, but I didn't want to say it. I didn't have court today. I know, but I mean, just to feel... Divorce! Look, a guy can feel good. A guy can get dressed up and feel good. Sometimes I want to feel fancy. Sometimes you want to dance in the mirror by yourself. You know, dance like no one's looking. I know. I dance like somebody's looking all the time, baby. So wait, uh, how is all that going? It's going good. It's going good. Let's just, you know, that's a big part of what's going on with me. But, you know, we talk business. Yeah, I mean, I... I I just want to do some business stuff. (laughs) This is a business podcast, but we always talk about the work-life balance is always, it's always there, regardless if you're trying to do your own business, entrepreneurial-esque, or you're trying to do, you know, move up professionally, you're always going to have to deal with that kind of work-life balance. I, look, uh, I, there's some dark years recently where I let that shit interfere with my life. Very dark. And because I was internalizing kept maybe those, too much. You kept wearing cloaks everywhere you went. Yeah. Just, just like hovered you didn't even walk you just kind of hovered into a room you're gonna see that so kind creepy. of uh you're gonna see that kind of comedy so more I need to at borrow, science <laughs> i need to borrow night. your cloak <laughs> i don't have the i don't have the <clears throat> i don't have the prices right losing horn. <laughs> are you ready am i ready yeah i'm ready how about this you're doing something tomorrow you haven't done stand-up in five years you haven't done an open mic i'm gonna do it with you um you know, not at the same time. We'll be separate. It won't be like a. We're not the Scalar brothers. Yeah. But, uh, it, but I'm saying, like, you're. Uh, you are doing something that you don't really need to do. Yeah. It's something uncomfortable. We talked about this on the last episode, if anybody wants to go back and listen. But uh, you're doing something uncomfortable, which is stand up. Some people like to say that I don't know how you can do that. It's amazing. Um, even in an open mic. Yeah. Uh, the old saying is most people would rather be. They're they're more scared. Of, Seinfeld had a better way of saying it, but You'd people are more scared to give the the eulogy than be in the coffin. Right. I think he said you'd rather be in the coffin than giving the you eulogy. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why you're up there with Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Anyways, yeah. Uh, I mean, some people I, go, I have, that's torturing yourself. I do have extra time right now, and it's one of those things that. At this point in my life, I'm not, I don't get too worked up. Like, I'm really not worked up about it. It's like, like I said the last time, it's like, I've been there. You know what's, tell me this. Do you know what the ma- the deal with the masks is going to be? Like, are we going to have to wear masks? No, no, no. No, you Who's can't. Who's wearing masks? Um, I think in the audience, uh, I think I think businesses kind of make everybody now. I Look, if, if even if it wasn't, like, mandated by your state or city, I think a lot of a lot of businesses that are doing anything where they're having people indoors, I think they're asking people to mask up or leave. Um, and look, it's I don't know how that works with drinking. 
honestly. Well, I know for restaurants, we were just talking to some guys outside, and I was hearing about poker and how that works. I don't really yeah, understand. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like they have like plexiglass around the table, but you have the urinal partition style of plexiglass between all nine people around the table. Well, at restaurants, they'll do the thing where you got to wear the mask to your table, and then it's you know no limits from there. And why would a comedy club be any different? You realize how much of your face you use. In oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I, I can't. This is the money maker, baby. Well, there used to be like a theory, like don't have a beard as a, a stand up because you you lose part of your facial like just expression with it. That I was guess, like an yeah. old school kind of way of doing it, you know, uh, or you know, kind of theory, I guess, or guideline. But I can see that. it could take away, I guess. But I mean, Zach Galifianakis is one of the funniest stand ups I've ever seen. So yeah. It, you know. But then in the uh, second half of his first special, he did Seth Galifianakis <laughs> yeah. with, uh, with just a mustache. Oh, did he shave it? And he shaved, yeah. Well, that's funny. Where they had Brian Unger interviewing him, and he couldn't keep it together as he was in. Like, they just let it in. Yeah. The, of, in the special, where he's cracking up. Is that the Purple Onion one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a great special. It's a weird... My favorite part is when he goes, who's your favorite comic? He's in San Francisco. <laughs> the guy goes, Mort Saul. And he's like, Mort Saul, the political comedian from the 60s? That's your... God damn it. <laughs> uh, that's a great special. Check it out. Uh, you don't know who Mort Saul is? I don't. No, he's one of, one of those guys you should know. But okay. uh, but like, if you watch sure it, you'd be you like... people at home got that. You know, whatever. Um... What else is going on? Are you are you, so you nervous? You're not nervous. So you're you're doing something that's not comfortable. I it's I definitely could be more prepared, <laughs> but at the same time, I also have convinced myself I'm the type of person I don't like. I'll probably walk out of the room. I so. I don't like really. <laughs> I don't know. You think it's gonna be that painful? Come no, on. no, I don't want. I try not to watch anybody's stuff just because my you know my memory is so terrible. Oh, that, you're just like, afraid you're gonna steal it. I, I I do I definitely get afraid that I'm gonna accidentally lift something. That's like the worst thing in stand up. So I don't know. I, I plus I get I wanna go back on stage or get on stage if you know, I'm waiting <laughs> to get on. Okay. You know, it's like you Just get watch. You, I'm not good at sitting I can't like I definitely don't watch stand up a lot anymore because of that. Like you I I know it's kinda knowing yourself, right? Like I know what I don't know and I know like I know I have a shitty memory and over time, you're you're riffing, or we're you know we're talking shit, you know, uh, with a bunch of guys, and you're you're making jokes, and you're like, did I come up with that? I think I did, but I don't even want to question. Yeah, okay, you know? but I mean, that's you know you're talking. I'll watch. You gotta stop having conversations with friends. We can, we can. No, 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 no. It's the other thing. I can just guys. I can't be funny up. right now. I can watch. I can. I not, don't want to. No, no, I don't pull any jokes. I cannot watch stand up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I'm rarely the funniest in a group of. Uh, my guy friends anyway. I know. Yeah. I'm very droll. <laughs> You're the straight guy. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just up my own ass uh, a lot of the time. Right. Which is quite exquisite. Stop picking at it. I don't know. It's a pretty good ass. Uh, Brazilian women stop me in the street and ask, how do you get that ass? Not what I'm talking about. They're like, stop damn, you got... at your ass is what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, it, it, it does. things do get lost in, in the black hole there, so... <laughs> um, I don't know. Down we, in the crevice. We were talking about uh, how do you kind of. We were talking about off mic right before we started outside about how do you. The cobbler's children has no shoes dilemma, and uh, you know I won't I won't bring in the exact reference we were talking about outside, but uh, on the on your patio. Um, what the person? Because he. John Paul Labadee, Stephanie pictures friend of the program. Well, we can't sit on my patio right now. Too late. We're edit. live, buddy. He's probably watching it right now. He the is. Person. He is. Any I can see second. It. Um, well, so uh, come in. We're going to talk all kinds of uh, misinformation sorry, about dude. your business. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Um, but we were talking about like uh, you know, it's really hard to promote yourself and not feel. I this is how I feel. Not feel douchey. For sure. Uh, and when you're a one man show. Uh, for a business or a brand that you're trying to you push, it, it's really hard to. I think it, it, you just have to do it. It's like sta- doing stand up. You just have to do it, get over it, and just take your take your licks on whatever happens. It's yeah. It's one of those. Th- it's like anything, like exercising. You just have your body start doing it. Just have your hands start going to the keyboard and start doing the shit, and have that go. And like just starting is always the hardest part. Right. And just get in some sort of figure out a way to trick yourself 
and to just getting into it. Because once you get into it, then your your mindset that is stopping you from doing it in the first place, where it's like, oh, I don't want to. Now it's going to be, I don't want to. Now that I'm into it, I don't want to stop doing it. And yeah. just knock it out. I, yeah, and I also think like um, saying stuff out loud sometimes and going like, why am I, why am I worried about pushing this out there? Like, yeah. So, Sometimes you're not even really, like really thinking analytically or like like yourself. I find it. I don't know. For me, it works sometimes when I'll. I'll uh, I might sound like a crazy person if someone saw me <laughs> talking to myself, but like, I, I'll try to do that because I'll be like, well, "What? Wait a minute!" Because I'll catch myself overthinking and just going, "Okay, I'll do. I'll get to that. I'll do it. I won't do it. I'll do, oh yeah!" And then time runs out of the day and you just don't do it. And it's like, sometimes I'll catch myself and just go, "Why?" Why don't you just do it right now? What, what yeah, the fuck? Th- literally, the time you're spent right. being ta- thinking about it is the time it would take to do whatever stupid thing it is that you're not doing. Right. Like, realistically, <coughs> it, we might be talking about uh, an Instagram, Facebook post where it's like, come up with the wording, get your hashtags, get all your mentions scraped, and put it out. Right. Or it, it doesn't even, like... What don't if it ta- if it's like I don't I don't know if I'll get the right hashtags. Well, right? that's where a lot of people stop. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's just like, well, what is gonna make you feel good about putting it? If you do twenty at a time and you have twenty ready to go, is that gonna make you want to put that first one out? Right. Because some people, it's that's how they want to do it. I want to have twenty good to go because I'm gonna because I don't want to start, and then it just goes away because I only do one. Sometimes that's like, and that can. I can mess with you, but... Sometimes putting it out there, right? Like, you're doing stand-up, right? Tomorrow night, and you have it on the calendar. Now you have to do it. Yeah. Oh, I definitely it's have like, to do it's it. It's like, uh, I, I was looking for, like, for pre-COVID, I was like, maybe there's, a, a uh, like, a 10K I should run or something. You know, like, just to have a reason to do right. it. Because it's hard to just ma- do maintenance all yeah. the time yeah. if, you're, if you're working out and stuff. I used to do that, like, Ten years ago, like period, I just sign up for five k's, fifteen k, try just to be like, that's my goal. So I'm gonna be doing, you know, I'm working towards that, and it's like, well, why not? You know, if you need something, it's good to have something to work towards. But sometimes it's it's, you just let's say in this case, and and John Paul said, just knock it out. Sounds easy with uh, the the crying laughing emoji. Yeah, uh, that what's it called? You know, sometimes. If you just put it out there for that one post, then you're like, "Fuck!" Now I got it. Now I have to do it. Right. That's another. Yeah. That's you know accountability right there. But I mean, I don't know that. It, it's one of those things where I, I don't know why I have the issue of uh, promoting. I have I've been shitting the bed promoting this podcast like I'm supposed to, uh, as far as doing our marketing. So mm. this may be in a vacuum. We may be doing it live, and there might be like five people watching. Mm. <laughs> um, really. But I don't know because it's uh I don't I don't know what I I've what? Got, I've got something fucked up where like even no matter how tired I was like at the end of the night I could just kind of as I was going to sleep I could still like do this mindless kind of setup pr- promotion stuff and now I, I've lost that muscle for some reason I, I don't know it's what, a habit thing for sure yeah it's easy to let those habits go away you know it's like oh well I, I'm used to doing that all the time so I don't you know I got it I'll I'll catch up to it. But yeah. it's like you do that once, and then that letting go of the habits becomes a thing. Well, That's something I've been dealing with. Like, just it's easy for me right now to just let things uh, kind of go to the wayside, just in terms of everyday, mm-hmm. you know, day to day things, operations, and whatnot. And like just, what? Like, just like routine things, you know. Shave your grundle. Uh, shaving grundle daily, mm-hmm. twice a day, sometimes mm-hmm. depends. Yep. You know, depends on air pressure, whatnot, but. It's it's hard to like come back from letting go of the habits. I think like where it's something you had at one point and then you let it go. That's it's like losing weight, gaining it back, and trying to lose the weight again. It's harder, right? A lot of extra skin. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, shout out to Eddie Maloof who gave us uh, some nice words. Um, wow. That's the guy who listened to the podcast and got a hold of both of us. Yeah. I gotta schedule him. Creative waves are real, according to our sometimes producer John Paul Wolbato. That's how you say his last name, right? Yeah. Uh, I get that too, but you, that can be an excuse. That can be creative. Creative waves can be 
you, you can use that as a way to not create, I guess, is kind of how I was trying to think about it. It's like, um, you can go, well, I need to, uh, I need to really do whatever art you're trying to do right or, or shoot something or, you know, sit down and actually do something that art, do your painter. I mean, like well, it's putting pussy on a pedestal. <laughs> What's that now? 40 year old virgin. It, like you can't, you can't elevate it to perfection. You have to have it perfect every time because more often than not, quantity is where it's at. Like things get forgotten. You're not going to have the most epic Instagram, Facebook post of all time. I'm going to be honest. Okay. Pussy on a pedestal always sounds nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, because it always is like, I'm now I can see everything, right? I've always thought the visual of that in my head has always been like that sounds that's that, kind of sweet. That's not what, that's not the thing. <laughs> just because you don't <laughs> know get, how the anatomy is doesn't. No, but I, that's what I just picture a, a, a hot lady on on like on uh where sure. In a museum. Okay, great. That's not what on I'm, a I'm saying. Like, you can't elevate no, your I Instagram, g- Facebook posts too high. Just put them out. You can't turn a hoe into a hotel. That's what you're saying, right? Can't turn a hoe into a housewife. I, oh yeah, that's right. That's what. Uh, always mess that up. Yeah, just that's pragmatic. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, I'm just saying, just think of the. I want you to close your eyes. Just think of that okay. visual. You're going through a museum of vaginas. All right. And you're like, whoa. This is kind of great. You got the little headphones on that they mm-hmm. give you, and it's like this vagina. They're <laughs> rated by David. This hairy David vagina. David Attenborough. Yeah, I want to go to that museum. I, sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, before you, you, <laughs> do you stroke out? You all right there? Uh, I'm just thinking about the pussy museum, and there's nothing there. Lot, lot of plexiglass can't touch, for sure. That's yeah. that's there's like dog cones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what if you did? What if you mix that with Salvador Dali Museum? Oh, now we're gross. talking melted pussy. That is gross. <laughs> yeah. Ew, dude. Yeah, dude. Ew. Okay, gross. All right. So, uh, Your look. Head. It's Saturday night. Yikes. It's a little silly. Silly goose time. Um, one thing I wanted to uh, bring up. I got I got asked uh, a question. I, I got hit up by. A freshman in college now, uh, and then a guy going into freshman. freshman. And then a guy going into, so I guess a freshman going into sophomore year and a, a senior in high school going into uh, freshman year. I got these. What the hell is going on in your social? Why are you talking to these people? It's because I taught that class at USF a while back. Well, how'd you hook up with a high schooler? No, one, that one was in college. Live? Should we turn, <laughs> cut this live feed? There, it's my new Craigslist friend. Look, <laughs> we Greco rum and wrestle. In the alley, and we just, they're my new, we just, look, it's not gay. It's actually, whoever's the gayest is the the, the most straight. I wasn't picturing a dude. Okay. Well, what am I going to greco Roman wrestle women? No. I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. What do we, why? I mean, like, their bodies just, I just not like hard. I keep talking about it. Yeah. It's good. Keep talking okay. about it. So, <laughs> uh, that's how I got COVID, really. But um, Yeah, what else? <laughs> so I got hit up. Did you come in? One was through like uh, some alumni association. Man, it doesn't matter. I look. I'm such a whore to answer stuff for the podcast because I go, hey, when we run out of shit to talk about, sometimes this might come in handy. Oh, that's <laughs> what's <laughs> happening right now. I get it. Yeah. Uh, so next time I won't make fun of you and your high school friend. Well, look, my bad. Look, we're starting a boy band. It's not the band's gonna make it. Uh, so. My thing is, they both were asking, "How do you get in? How do you get into the professional market at that age?" And it, it's such a broad question. What they they were asking me about marketing specifically, like Pacific Ocean. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were asking me how do, how does one get in the marketing world as as a grunt right now when you're you know an underclassman? The, it doesn't seem like I'm sure there's a lot of fear going on with everything because college students are just not they're they're zooming. If yeah. they're if they're doing college at all, I mean, it seems like I'd be it's... fucking pissed if I if I was paying for college and not being able to go. Oh, well, even before this though, we're paying three hundred dollars for a textbook and all the bullshit. It that like, that's fucking all of it. Before criminal. this was criminal. Now it's just everybody's realizing. Oh, this is so dumb. Remember the anxiety of like getting the correct textbook? Nah, like I didn't care about. It. I mean, but like about it too much. 
But they would be like, if you don't have it, you're not going to even pass the class. And you're like, cool. Well, uh, these things are like, I got to find like a fucking library speakeasy to buy this out of. What the fuck? Right. This is before Chegg was a thing. This yeah. is before like Amazon. People are selling shit on their own. PDFs. On yeah. Heard of it. Yeah. So I, that, that, that shit, I don't understand it. I think it's a conspiracy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. McGraw Hill. I'm coming out for you. <laughs> yeah. I pulled that out of my ass. That's a good pull. Yeah. Uh, good publisher pull. The pub- There is something fucked up about that now that I think about it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And they come out with another edition every year. You and change they four it. commas. Yeah. And add it's... another guy on the end who's not real. I remember that's I was not... like, I'm going to buy come it. On. It was like to 24th edition or something crazy. I was like, I'm going to buy the 23rd. I might be a page or two. I'll, I'll figure it out. But it. Failed it was, the class. It was like $125 difference. Dude. And then it was the same information, just different pages set up. Right. But it was like, you definitely forget that I did that. <laughs> fucked me up the whole year. Not cool. It was math, so it was fine. I fucking crushed it. That's all going away. Yeah. Oh, you dude. Colleges and universities in general. Business, You're done. business calculus You're too. Done. <laughs> that advanced calculus that I ace. I don't know how to do any of that anymore. You aced it? Dude, I. I was such a C plus student, but all math classes I crushed because they're just puzzles to me. <laughs> Seriously, I was a A plus student in math. What? All the time. What? Grammar, not my strong suit. Uh, anything, uh, language arts, uh-huh. English, fuck. Yeah. God damn it! It would take me forever. That's why, like, I math think math is like a puzzle to me. Math, yeah. is, I, I see everything's puzzles. Really, I see business as a puzzle. I see uh, jokes as a puzzle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They, I mean, they are, in a way. They're unsolvable, in a way, too, because yeah. you're never done. Yeah. And joke, jokes have a weird... They have a weird life to them. Like, uh, if you've seen that... Uh, what's the wine movie with uh, <laughs> Pig Vomit? Paul Giamatti? You know, uh, sideways. Fucking Antichrist! You know how they talk about wine and how it has a life and it, it has its uh, apex, like, you know, yeah. wine that's... 30 years old, this kind of wine, it, it hits its sweet spot. Jokes have a timeline like that, too. Like, you'll you'll tell them, and you can try to tell them for 10 years, and for whatever reason, you can tell it the exact same way, and it just doesn't work. Oh, yeah, the Zika stuff doesn't hit like it used to. You <laughs> no. Know? My Snuggie bit fucking eats it Yeah, all I, the time it's, now. Yeah, it's bullshit, man. Uh, but... Stop dedicating all your energy to the viruses. Well, I mean... Starting now. <laughs> Look, uh, tell, uh, having COVID was no, like telling people now. I had herpes. It was like, I got to call everybody I've ever hugged in the last couple months. I know, you kept week. calling me over and over again. I was like, dude, I get it. Well, look, you, t- you, you tagged in for Greco Roman wrestling in the alley, but. Kept reinfecting myself. Like an idiot. So, how do you. How, how does one right now that's. You're 19, right? And you're trying to figure out wow, okay, a there. path. You can, it's hard to get a job, right? Like, just. I, I was like, I wanted to be like, look, in normal times, I tell you to go get a bartending job or b- go be a bar back to be a bartender. Yeah. That was the best thing I did Some in college. Vest? Yeah. <laughs> get a cool vest like Eric. A uh, towel? <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you have? What, what kind of gin you want? No, but I mean, go go work there because uh, when it was like slow nights, like a Tuesday, it was just fun. You just like, there's not a lot of people there. You can bartend and kind of hang out. Yeah, I never did that. I, I loved it. And it was like, I don't know. I you like to gossip with the ladies. I, like look, to, that's I like, like to, to I like to gab like gals at brunch. That's yeah, different. I know. Thing. That's the white claw on me. Um, yeah. But I'm saying like, what 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 do you tell a 19 year old? I was just like, look, it's just like anything. You know the answer to that. It's just like people want to ask you how to what what's the best diet or like what's the best nutrition plan. And you're like, you know, or well, or you don't know, but you know you need to kind of figure it out. Give yourself some options. You but know, uh, give okay. yourself a couple options Here's what I said. and sort of narrow it down. Like Here's what I said. Develop a skill. Yeah. Start there. Juggling. You you can online, you can you can literally take an assessment test on LinkedIn too and uh, humble bribe that as soon as you finish it. I'm starting to mow those down because I guess they're important now. Um, so like you can take you can teach your look, we taught ourselves a lot of shit via YouTube. You have to cite you have Oh you have God. to sift through a bunch of shit, but I mean, like, you ha- it's one of those things where you find things that work for you and, and don't. Like, that's how I learned a lot of Facebook advertising through that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And now I can do Instagram. Now I can, and then you, you figure out social media ads there with Facebook ads. Then I go, oh, I know how Pinterest ads work without even doing it. You it just get is, the concept. Yeah, it is tough, though, to direct somebody and say it. Uh, I mean, I, I would say start with Google stuff. Yeah. Google it's is more marketable. Be around, you know, it's, it's the uh, colossus of it all. And start there because that's all free and they'll give you the little certificate and all that. And like, or HubSpot. Do that training because there's always they always need HubSpot certified people. Yeah, I mean the basic idea. Get a bunch of them. It's all kind of the same idea. They all sort of operate the same way um, then, in terms of the the boring marketing and then make bids your, and stuff like that and how it goes. But, but then but, then make your own. Then put your foot in the door with people. Hey, can I can I do your ads? Can I run campaigns for you? Uh, you know, someone you know. So I'm going to get just started. Get your foot in the door. So you yeah. have a case study. You build a case study. Don't do that for too long. Don't do it for too long, but do it. Do it. Go. Hey, I'm going to do it for. Uh, I know. I know this. Uh, I have a family friend that has a law firm. They. Uh, I'm going to try to do it with a low budget, and just tell them, hey, I'm I'm trying to work this out too, but it seems like you need that as yeah. well, and uh, consider it like an internship. That's yeah, not really somebody right. who's willing to toss a hundred bucks at it and be okay with whatever the results are as bad as they get. Here's what you're not going to find. You're not going to find people reaching out to you. Yes. If you want to wait around for shit to happen to you, it's not going to happen. So the other thing I said is start harvesting, harvesting. That's that, that's that douchey businessy kind of uh, term for double down on your relationship networking. But, uh, but it is true. Like, you know, start, uh, if you're 19 or whatever, Keep in touch with everybody that was in your high school class. You never know. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we had a millionaire in our in our class in high school. He was what? a millionaire by sixteen, and he still just went to school with us. Okay. What's he doing? He had now? an IT company. I, I think he's doing pretty well. Okay. Last I checked. Well, good for him. Uh, I think he made his like seventeenth <sighs> app or something as like a private equity firm. But yeah, um, one of those things were. Uh, opportunity might be out there if you just reach out what i've been doing in the covid era just to keep my sanity too is i'm i'm trying to call people randomly i haven't talked to in a while a couple uh, you're in the car or i go for a walk for 30 minutes an hour and just go who haven't i talked to in a minute and just try to call them it's rare to have somebody you know who doesn't know somebody who might need digital marketing services well, in you, some capacity if you want to look at it from a douchey perspective making okay. those calls uh, for marketing yourself, make I'm saying I'm um, not your angle. I'm saying my uh, if you want to look the at douche, it, I got it. If you want to look at it from the business network or business development perspective, on a douchey kind of way, you're top of mind. Right. Yeah. That's a lot of that's Just a lot of marketing. Up. Yeah. That's a lot of uh, I don't know. That's a lot of local business marketing. That's a lot of startup marketing. That's a lot of uh, small business marketing. You're gonna. A lot of businesses uh, in the beginning, they're gonna get, they're they're getting more work because of the work they've done, right? If you're a professional service yeah, business, referrals and whatnot, right? If you're decent, you'll probably good work begets good work, right? You'll get more clients. Yes, but in a professional service instance, I'm not talking about like you know if you're manufacturing products, it's a whole other kind of issue. Yeah. Uh, same with e-commerce. If you have your own product, that's a little tougher. But I'm saying. Ain't nobody selling manufactured goods anymore. Well, most people trying to do their own side hustle around their business, a lot of them are professional services. A lot of them don't have a product nowadays. It's very intangible. So it's like, what what do you have as an asset? And that is the relationships you're setting up. Uh-huh. This podcast is great because we go out of our way to ran- randomly talk to you know CEOs that I'm trying to get back on to come back on and just – it's been four years since I've talked to some some of them, you know. Yeah, which one? Wait, we, we had a PO, We need to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. CEO sounds important. Uh huh. Fran Biederman Gross, mm. holler. She's CEO of uh, Advantages dot net. If you oh. want to look that up, but All right. Uh, great story. Got to interview her a long time ago. Just on a whim, a, her PR company found us. Found her podcast. This might be pre Eric uh, era. Right. But um, but I don't remember. That, that one PR company guess. set me up with all seven of their CEOs that they had under their wing. Wow. And it was like, oh, great. This is cool. Yeah. And they're all female, too, which is good because 
I want more. Because you're single. <laughs> yeah. I want more. Yeah. Well, I'd put it on a pedestal, so <laughs> it'd be tough. Call back. That's what I'm talking about. What? All right. This is a sloppy episode, but we did it. We got through it. Oh, we're done? It. Okay. We're done. Okay. That was fun. I don't think what it was about that my sloppy. sweat equity? Ooh, a little sloppy. Yeah, a little sweat equity. Sweat equity. What about my sweat equity?